If you want to be a TV writer, you need to understand how the career path actually works. You don't just become a TV writer. And there isn't even just one kind of TV writer. There are seven, yes, seven different kinds of writers that can be seen in a writer's room. And that's not even including the showrunner. So what does it mean to be a TV writer? What are those different types and what do they do in the writer's room? Hi, I'm Megan. If you're new to my channel, I'm an aspiring TV writer and I have done the research to help you start yours on your way into this industry. Okay, before I get too far into this, I have a question. Would you rather stay as a TV writer or eventually rise the ranks and become a showrunner? Are you interested in kind of what it takes to run a show and be the creative director of a TV show? Or would you rather just stick to the writing and work towards the showrunner's vision? Let me know in the comment section. I'm really curious to see what you guys think. And my own answer is I definitely want to be a showrunner one day. The first part of this series was all about the showrunner who they are, what role they have in a room, and what duties come with it. Today, we are talking all about the writers in a room, outside of, of course, the showrunner. So let's look at all of the different TV writers that go into a room, what kind of experience you need for each level, and what the responsibilities are. The lowest level writer in a writer's room is gonna be the staff writer. And you may be shocked to believe they are not guaranteed to write an episode. Staff writers are able to pitch ideas, help out with breaking the story and coming up with how the story is going to go, but they don't necessarily get to write their own episode of that show. Then you have the story editor. The story editor is guaranteed an episode and their name will appear in the credits. Then there's the executive story editor. This is a mid-level writer who has at least three years of experience at this point. And we're gonna move on to some new responsibilities when we bring in the co-producers. Co-producers are still mainly writing, but they are getting more onto the production side of things and will be delegated some production tasks to keep the production moving. Then you have the producer. This is somebody who's been at it for four or five plus years. They're moving more into the production side of things and they get to help out with creative decisions for the show and they're working on things like casting, costuming, locations. They get to really help make more of those decisions and be part of those decisions. Then we've got supervising producers. These people have been doing it for a long time. They can run the room if the executive producer or co-executive producer are busy. They're working directly one-on-one -on -one with the writers. They are at a level where they can start pitching their own shows to sell and start show running themselves. And really these are upper level writers at this point. They have been in the industry a long time and they've got the experience to really get on in there. And finally, there is the co-executive producer. This is the second in command in a room. They are working closely with the showrunner and helping them in any way they need. If the executive producer is busy, the co-executive producer can run the room. The co-executive producer will sometimes read and review scripts before they go off to the showrunner for the showrunner's approval. If the showrunner chooses to or is just really busy, they can give the co-executive producer power to make decisions in the room. And essentially a co-executive producer is a showrunner in training. Now every writer's room has its own specific needs and different roles that it needs filled. So you're not necessarily going to find all of these roles in every single room. You might find rooms that don't have one of these roles at all. You might find some rooms that have more than one of specific roles and none of others. I don't want this to seem like every room is going to have these things, but you need to understand what the options are and what different pieces can go into making a writer's room so you're prepared to be in that room and build your way up the ranks. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I know that it was really helpful for me when I started looking more into this industry and understanding how it works. And it made me feel a lot more in control of breaking into this industry and where I'm going with it. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you answer the question that I asked at the beginning of the video in the comment section. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos I post every week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.